Where I say, see, I'm living with anxiety, living in sobriety, proprietary needs. I ain't going out like a fiend, popping beans, paper chasing dreams till I'm living like a king. You know, that's real shit. And also, like, I shout out my cousin, you know, paper chasing dreams. You know, that's the song with me and Mufasa. So I have little, like, if you listen to the lyrics and you're really into my uh personality or whatever it is if you're like in a if you're in tune with big serbs like you're gonna find out these little tidbits and references that i put in the songs that relate to either other songs or other things that are like going on in my life first max was the turn out of my lifestyle Smoking green, blowing white clouds to build the blue skies Conversating with the gods by my wildflower huh? To let them know that it's the gods I would This love's the never-ending saga Gods by my wildflower huh? To let them know that it's the gods I would Art. This love's the never-ending saga Gods by my wildflower huh? To let them know that it's the gods I would Art. This love's the never-ending saga Gods by my wildflower huh? To let them know that it's the gods I would Art. This love's the never-ending saga Walk through the sands of times like Gara oh On the other side of that gad is karma you uh-huh, wet product uh-huh. the devil like inside your uh-huh, box uh-huh, now uh-huh. while the angels fly over my head uh-huh 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 we are back with another episode of the god's hour podcast with your boy big serbavelli back in the place to be la america superior palace 81 we in the building live in effect live and direct tell a friend to your girlfriend for me it's your boy mr nine times yeah so we have a lot of things we need to talk about yeah so i took a little break from the podcast you know i was uh purposely filming a lot of podcast episodes in advance just so i could get green light three done i've been working on green light three since march and with like the podcast it's kind of hard to do both at the same time uh, you know, I'm a very, I'm very busy. I got a lot of things I'm doing in my life. A lot of things are going on. So I'm just like, you know what? Let me just film a bunch of back-to-back episodes. If you like them, you like them. If you don't, go watch something else. I don't care. Uh, all the true fans are going to stay with me anyways, right? So, I mean, not like that. Like, I appreciate all the the, the listeners and the viewers anybody if you watch the whole podcast to if you just watch the clips on instagram like it's not a big deal for me i mean it it is a big deal that you're listening you know what i mean whoever you are but um when it comes to the music it's just more so i'd rather just do the music the podcast is more of like the uh the fill-ins kind of you know what i mean i could just if i don't do something i think i'm gonna go crazy if i don't paint if i don't If there's not something, if I'm not doing something, I feel like I'm just going to go into a state of uh, prognosis or whatever it is, right? So I filmed a whole bunch of episodes in advance, and I probably took two weeks off of the podcast, which is kind of a long time. You know, usually I do them on Mondays, but now I'm kind of, uh, it's everywhere. Like, it could just happen at any point, right? Which Which is cool for me. Like, I don't have, I don't like schedules. Even though I'm a Capricorn, I like my my life is based on a schedule type basis. But I have, you know, I had the shows going on. I had to practice for the shows. I was so busy doing things. So I said, you know what? I'm going to come back on when I'm going to promote Greenlight 3. And this probably won't come out the day it drops. It'll probably be the Friday after, like the first whatever <clears throat> The first October of the month. So if you're listening to this, Green Light 3 is already out. Go, go. You can listen to it everywhere. You know, um, Tune Core, shout out to them. They do a really good job of just kind of like setting up whatever it is. Like, they have a good uh, publication system, a uh, copyright system to where you could post it in perpetuity of all DSPs. Like, if uh, there's like a, uh youtube or like like let's say there's a new thing like my tube comes out and it's like basically youtube but a different program and you could post your music on there like they have a system to where it'll just be there at some point or whatever i don't i'm not too sure how it works because there's not really any new uh uh 
DSP platforms. I mean, the last biggest DSP platform that that's been out here is Spotify, and Spotify is pretty much fairly new, as far as I know. It's been around for at least ten years. Spotify, which is crazy, um, seeing how how far like the digital age has come. Because I remember when YouTube barely came out. I mean, barely came out. There was very few, like Napster was around, and it's crazy because I think uh, the the album drops on Napster. Uh, if that's true or whatever, I think I saw that where it drops on. Like, how was Napster even still around? You know what I mean? I think I thought it got buried by Spotify, Pandora. Like Pandora is an old DSP at this point. Not, uh, I would say the oldest modern form of DSPs would be YouTube. Like, it's crazy how YouTube is still getting so uh sold up by these companies and advertisers that just come and literally clip the wings off of youtube i remember when youtube you could find a bunch of wild shit on youtube and now it's kind of being regulated in a where in a way where you just see a bunch of crazy shit not on youtube but yeah, so shout out to TuneCore. It's going to be out everywhere. Spotify, Pandora, Bla- uh, fucking Kick, Backspace, wherever, MySpace, whatever it is, like whatever you choose to listen to music, Amazon, it's going to iTunes, it's going to be everywhere. And it's really cool how they just have a bunch of different platforms that they'll, they'll publish your music on. So I want shout out to shout out them real quick. It's uh, it's definitely not easy being an independent artist and having all your ducks in a row, but they kind of make it like just a super simple, easy process. And I appreciate that because nothing's free in this world. You obviously got to pay a price, but that's cool with me. You know, any 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 system that helps any machine out there that wants to help me out and bring my music to the masses. I just appreciate that. You know what I mean? Even though it's like this kind of automated machine meets customer service or whatever which is like a lot of businesses that's cool with me fuck all of what i'm talking about right real quick though so we're here green light three it took me pretty much three months to get a bulk of the album done the first song i recorded was bursa box brawler i think that was around march was the first um like that was the uh the first song and it was right after I either wrote it. It was like right around the time I was finishing up uh, A Love Superior. So I, right when I got done with A Love Superior, I got straight into Green Light 3. And it wasn't even planned. Like that's the beauty, beauty with music. Like there's more albums that I put out that weren't planned than I planned to. It seems like the better music that just comes out spontaneously is a lot better than what I planned. Um, It's just kind of like, I guess that's just how the dice rolls for me. I feel like A Love Superior was something I wasn't even going to do. I just wanted to make an album, like a lovey-dovey type uh, album for Valentine's. My fucking allergies are fucking with me right now. And there's a raid going on, Pokemon Go. It's cool. I'll wait on that. So, what was I going to say? What was I talking about? So with the Love Superior, I didn't plan it out. But then it was like, it was just a perfect, I don't know if I made a Love Superior. I want to say I made a Love Superior in a month, even though it was still like nine tracks. They were all kind of like short songs. It was a short album. I don't even think it's 25 minutes, that album. Um, I don't know how long Green Light 3 is. I definitely just reminded myself that I got to post it on YouTube uh, on my own channel because it's weird because youtube it's like they have their your own separate channel which is kind of lame because i have my own like how come they don't have a system to where you just connect your youtube channel and they post your music on there i don't know they got to figure that out maybe that's an idea youtube if you're watching this anybody who actually you can identify that this is the artist especially if they already have like millions of subscribers or whatever it is like, I don't understand why you make a separate YouTube page. I feel like that's why a lot of artists don't get discovered because there's literally thousands and thousands of artists that are posting music every day on YouTube or whatever, just in general. And, 
they they're, they're not discoverable because the the channels new or whatever or they it just gets buried along with other channels. They really got to fix that. So with Greenlight Three, it took it took me like three months to get most of it done. And then I started adding and cutting songs from there. I don't know what the songs I cut. I don't know if I'm going to... I don't know what I'm going to do with them. I definitely got to mix and master them, which is like a fucking headache that... I hate mixing and mastering. It took me like at least six six times to mix and master the whole album top to bottom uh, with Green Light 3. I love Superior. It was more so... Like with Green Light 3... I had like the most attention to details because I actually know what I'm doing. I know what I'm looking for. I know, oh, okay, I don't want to hear this or maybe this is missing, you know, little skits, you know, little ad libs, this and that, or maybe removing things that I added. That's another thing too. You don't want to overproduce an album. And I feel like a lot of a lot of um, today's pop music, it's super overproduced. Like it has, it's just, a Jackson Pollock painting of just like, oh, let's add this, let's add that, let's add these singers, all these instruments and all that. And I feel like it it takes away from the the uh the lead vocal vocalist um songs, you know, uh, um I feel like a lot of rock music is like that. A lot of different forms of music where the lead singer is kind of taking a backseat to the instrumentation which which isn't you know i'm not knocking anything it's not bad it's just me personally when i make music i'm not trying to put the bells and whistles and harmonicas and cowbells and all that like i don't care for any of that i really would rather just find like a really dope loop put the drums on it put whatever whatever extra sason i gotta put on it and make it happen it's not it's not a, a overly thought out thing to where I'm just like I'm 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 thinking about solely the instrumentation. The number one focus is the lyrics for me. Like what am I really saying? The messages I'm trying to convey. And a lot of the times it's literally like I'm not even trying to convey a message. It's more so I'm trying to convey a, a feeling or a, a vibe to the listener. You know, a, a lot of it's funny because a lot of people say like, yeah, man, like you're like your your lyrics are real. You know what I mean? There's not like a lot of real artists out there. And I'm like, really? Like a lot of the shit I'm saying is like not revolutionary or or like a lot of what I rap about isn't like I'm going to be honest. It's not the craziest you know, I'm just keeping it real. And maybe that's kind of what is missing in, in music. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but it's just a lot of what I say, especially in Greenlight 3, is shit that I've actually been going through and shit that I know. You know, obviously, there's like bullshit lyrics. I call them bullshit lyrics to where it's just like meaningless or, or like kind of more senseless or not as thought provoking or thoughtful rhymes, you know, uh, um, you know, hit them with Hollies, I'm popping a snitch, 27 bitches all on my dick, they calling me bitch, you know, like, that's all bullshit lyrics, like, it's it's a good flow, it's a good, it's, it, it makes for a good catchy song, but that's unorthodox, Glocks, but when you go to, like, pocket rocket, ch- pocket rocket change, where I say, see, I'm living with anxiety, living in sobriety, proprietary needs, I ain't going out like a fiend, popping beans, paper chasing dreams, till I'm living like a king, you know, that's real shit, and also, like, I shout out my cousin, you know, paper chasing dreams, you know, that's the song with me and Mufasa, so I have little, like, if you listen to the lyrics, and you're really into my uh personality or whatever it is if you're like in a if you're in tune with big serbs like you're gonna find out these little tidbits and references that i put in the songs that relate to either other songs or other things that are like going on in my life you know and um i don't put that on purpose but it serves a purpose to where like it's all uh i maintain continuity just by like i don't know like keeping the the listener in focus like oh yeah well that connects with this you know connecting the dots type shit it just it just happens you know what i mean uh stephen king does that where some of his books he'll actually reference other books 
And I think that's just a testament to how great of a writer he is. He doesn't have to do it. Like, and I really don't like uh, me as a writer. I don't like making part twos or sequels or shit like that. But it happened. You know, when I do my albums and their sequels to the albums, like this is the third installment of Green Light 3. It's not the third album as in it's a story like Green Light 1 is uh, me when I'm a kid. Green Light 2 is when fucking I'm a teenager and Green Light 3, it's me as a man. No, it's actually kind of like a continuation of the vibe or, or in this case, Green Light 1 started off as me my first fully produced beat tape. So that's all it was in a nutshell. Green Light 2 was a continuation of that. It was the, it was either, yeah, if it was, it was like a, the, a year or two after Green Light 1. And it was the continuation. I have a lot of Chicano references and samples in the beats. So Green Light 1 and 2 sound very similar. Um, but again, it's the continuation of the vibe. It took me four years to get from green light two to green light three. Why that happened is because it was like a culmination of things were going on in my life. I thought this fool was going to pull up on me. I was like, what the fuck is what? I really don't like when people interrupt my podcast. What the fuck is going on? Anytime somebody slows down, whether it be while I'm walking or like in front of my house, it's definitely like I'm on high, not like high alert, you know what I mean? But like, what's this fool doing? I want to say this is the neighbor, so it should be nothing to trip about, you know? Okay, so why it took so long for Green Light 3? I don't know. I I was going to make Solo 5 Singles 3. And, um... The period between Solo Five Singles One and Two was like a, a year or some shit like that. Um, off the top of my head, yeah, Solo Five One was 2016. Solo Five Two was 2018. So yeah, two years. It's not like like I go back to. It's not planned out. Like I could have worked on several different albums. You know, I have different albums in the works and things that I'm planning on doing. Here we go with another fucking car, dude. Here we fucking go. Active on the block right now. What's going on? It's funny because that car is like the color of the brim of my hat. The new hat I got. This is a fire, fire ass White Sox hat. The only thing I don't like is the brim. Damn, mommy. What? The first BBL on the block. Hold on. Let me get my lentes real quick. What? Man, the pizza mommies are coming out like that. <sighs> Domino's might have to order me some Domino's. <laughs> All right, this is being a cre- this is creepy now. All right, so this hat. Before we jump back into Green Light Three, because this bitch is fucking fuck the whole shit up. I don't like the brims. Some of the new era caps, man. The brims are like. Why? Why orange? Look at this hat. Look at how sick this is. You could have made this black. You could have made this a whole bunch of colors. Orange? Orange is crazy, bro. So, going back to Green Light 3 for like the third fucking time already, I had a whole bunch of different albums I could have done, and I just didn't do it. I just decided to go with Green Light 3. Wasn't really planned out, but I knew for a fact where it started from was in February, I had went to Las Vegas for the Hoenn tour for Pokemon. And I'd buy um some some uh some drum drum breaks and all that. And I'm like, well, how how does this work? Cause I know how to program loops and all that, but I don't know how to program drum breaks and all that. And just taking my time and learning how to do it made me realize this shit is easy. It's easy as fuck. It's not, you know, it's not rocket science. So I'm like, you know, just stick with it and try to figure it out. I ended up making a whole beat tape in one night, basically like a few hours that night watching John Wick. 
And shout out to John Wick. All his movies are fire. All, uh, uh, Keanu, all John Wick. All the John Wick movies are fire. Uh, shout out to Keanu Reeves. So while I'm making this, I'm thinking maybe I should sell these beats. Maybe uh, give them to some big name artists. I still want to do that. And it's weird because it's been... That was in February. We're almost in October, and I still haven't put that beat tape out. So that's what I'm saying. It's like I'll just make music and make content and, and just do all this all this uh, work that I do, but sometimes it won't drop. Like I have all my performances filmed, but I want to say like only fucking like not even 10% of all my performances you've seen either – like mostly on Instagram because I don't post them on YouTube. I don't know why. It's just like I just don't do it. I got to get better at like promoting all my shit, right? So whatever it is, I'm just making beats. And Bursa Box Brawler was the first one to where it was just... I had that beat for years, the loop and all that shit. I found that at Groovers in Riverside, this record shop that's no longer, rest in peace to Groovers. It's not here with us anymore. Groovers was an awesome record shop. I would get vinyl for a quarter a piece because they were going out of business. So they were like, fuck it, we're just giving these vinyl away because if they don't, they pretty much lose money and they have to figure out where they're going to... like they're. They're going to have to give away the vinyls at some point. So why not just sell them for a quarter each? And it's so funny because I would buy stacks and stacks, like 40 vinyls at a time. I did a, uh, I did that a few times because when I started digging, they were already going out of business. So I remember it was like, it was probably like 650 or something like that. Like uh, when he rang me up, it was 650 and I told the guy, I'm like, you think you could give me a discount? And he's like, bro, the vinyl is already a quarter a piece. What more discount do you want? And I was like, I don't know. And he's like, well, just give me five bucks. And it was so funny. I literally got mostly orchestral. Oh, shit. I gave the sauce away. Oh, shit. Nobody. Should I cut that out? Nobody. You didn't hear that. You fucking didn't hear that. So... I gave away the secret sauce, I'm sorry. But basically, I pretty much got all of like the same type records. And, and a lot of them were old, old 60s, 60s, not even 70s records that are old. Shit that nobody should dig, but as a beginning producer, you should dig through them just to find out later that there were shit, they were shitty records, as, as I found out. That's good though as a producer because it really it really shows you these records why they're bad and why they're not because one of the best samples I got was Bursa Box Brawler when I found it and just something about just playing it's the first track so you just drop the needle ooh you know what I mean and you hear that I heard that and it was so mesmerizing it just sounded like it sounded like a haunting ass like but soulful melodic and almost like a good haunting like like if a ghost possess you and you change the world hunger like with the world's hunger or something like that just something crazy about that sample and i knew i knew i was gonna do something with that but that probably was around 2018 so it took me five years to go back to that and had I rapped on it back then, it would have been horrible. It would have definitely not have been, you know, uh, the Trey 80 make a hater holla, bet your bottom dollar, burst a box, brawler, guala, mommy made in Guatemala. Like, it definitely would have been some other bullshit. I'm like, that's why I'm so thankful of, like, the way things pan out because I'm not one of these people that live in regret. I'm not one of these people that's just like, oh, well, if fucking this happened, it did, did, did. you know, I'm pretty much solidified and like whatever happens in my life, good or bad, I'm just going to take it for what it is and, and just be thankful of all of my blessings and lessons. Because if it's not a blessing, it's a lesson. And if it's a lesson, that's something you should really learn from, like, you know, the, the, the history, like those 
you know, who don't know history are doomed to repeat it or whatever the fuck it is. Like, just with me, I waited a long fucking time to make, like, not even, I didn't wait to make the album. It was just a long period of time went by. And I just got it done. So Bursa Box probably got done. And it was just this weird period where I'm just finding samples and I'm killing it. Like, I'm like, damn, dog, this is crazy. That's really where it came from, where just me finding great samples and just being like, I got to destroy this. And I would, I just had the right drums, had the right samples, had the right rhymes. And that's what Greenlight 3 is, literally. It's just me in this period of time where everything lined up for me. And that's all I'm ever going to want from this music shit. The the day I got to plan this out and like make it a nine to five thing to where like, oh, I got to make a beat today. I got to rhyme today. Like, I think that'll be the day where it'll just be like the day when the laughter died because music ain't supposed to be this super planned out thing. It's supposed to be spontaneous. So I think the second song was Ain't Enough. And let me pull up the track listing. So Bursa Box Brawler Ain't Enough. Black Magic Ratchet was one of the later songs. Unorthodox Glocks. Okay, so Pocket Rocket Change, Copper Jackets, and Bursa Box Brawler were all vinyl that I got from Groovers. And um, just waited years. And just going back to all the, the vinyl that I had from that time and I had recorded in my computer, going back to it, I'm like, oh, shit, I have heaters in this thing. And I ha- I'm sure I have a lot more that I haven't even gone to. I- I've it's super. I'm a super like half a klepto or something for literally buying vinyl, recording it all to my computer, and putting it in hard drives. Not really touching it. Fucking fi- finding a whole bunch of uh, samples on YouTube, saving them. I have like three thousand. Not really touching them, and also buying a whole bunch of sample packs and not touching them like really at all i made one b tape out of one sample pack which will probably come out um soon either october or november what though like that one's done and then the 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 b tape i i finished in february they're done they're like pretty much locked and loaded i just got to mix or master them so definitely october november space them apart month to month going to green light three this is kind of like a game changing album for me it's not something that i took lightheartedly and in in if i wanted to i could have dropped it in the summer you know but i just waited i i uh, actually i think i had the date. i think i had september 29th That's what I kind of do. Once I'm already locked in a date, I kind of dedicate, okay, it has to come out at this time. And then I pretty much spend the whole time getting it uh, to where it needs to be. And I think I had already came up with that date in June. So I knew I'm like, I'm going to give myself three months to perfect this album. And that's what I did. I added songs. I cut songs. I refined it. And that's just what ended up happening. The... The songs that were were guaranteed spots on this album were Angel Cake, Ain't Enough, Unorthodox Glocks, Pocket Rocket Change. And yeah, those were kind of like the core songs from the jump. Uh, uh, Oro came later, Black Magic Ratchet, shout out to Jetta OG, he featured on it. I'm going to talk about that a little bit more in depth. Uh, a little bit and a little bit um hammerheads angel cake those were all kind of songs i added on later after i started adding and cutting songs and it's just it's crazy to see how how when you dedicate yourself to to an art any art form it's crazy how like just shit moves in your life like I pretty much put all my chips on this album. I p- promoted it on my shows. I've been talking about it 
I've been pretty much speaking it into the universe, like speaking the album into existence. And that's all I've ever uh, like wanted out of this music shit is to just kind of gain some sort of recognition off of a body of work. And this is something that I totally stand behind. It's not like this is another album. This is a special album to me to where I fully endorse and wholeheartedly like just everything about this album is special to me because every beat like every lyric every and just everything about it is fucking dope the only thing i wish i would have had on this album i wish we could have got done sooner was the feature i wanted to have on angel cake with the homegirl ray shout out to her uh we just didn't get to it she's really busy with with her life and i'm busy with mine but more so like she's really out here like ray's really doing fucking phenomenal shit like she just be out here right so you know whatever we couldn't get the feature done but that's all right because we got we got bigger fish to fry and that's cool you know uh, we already have plans and motions to do more things and we could get this feature done but I'm not a big fan of like, oh, remember this song? Well, this is the remix or this is the feature. You know, I get that. You know, Quiet Storm was like that. You know, Mob D, Quiet Storm, Lil' Kim. That's cool. That makes it a whole different song, in my opinion, which it, it kind of is. Like, those lyrics aren't even like on the, the remix. They're not even on the original, right? So um, I didn't want to make a whole song breakdown, you know. We can do that maybe another time or something like that. But like Green Knight 3 is really just a process uh, of me finding out who the fuck I am. Like, who am I really? A lot of things are going on in my life. And, you know, in March, when I started this album, my grandma started living with us. And I was like super emotional, right? I had a lot of shit to say. And that's good because comfortability is the enemy of creativity. You don't ever want to be comfortable. So when my grandma staying with us, like it kind of fucked my mood up, like not fucked my mood up, but it was just like, it was like just seeing my grandma with, you know, her dealing with like fucking dementia and all this shit. And it took a toll on me for sure. Like day to day going to work and, and it was like, I have like a lot of anger. So all that was just in the music. And I feel like that's what a lot of what Greenlight 3 is. I was listening heavily influenced by Starker, Hidden Character, uh, more more specifically like Rap Money and uh, Hidden Character's first album. But all, all their other music, too, I was uh, I was listening to while I was making this album. Mob Deep uh, at the tail end. But pretty much those guys for sure. Um, my dad, he got really into firearms. He pretty much is nine, nine songs and he's bought more firearms. Uh, uh, he's bought that he, in, in the nine months it took to make, or, or no, in the six months it took to make this album, he's bought like a whole bunch of firearms. I don't even want to say exactly how, cause nobody needs to know our business like that, but yeah, you know, just me living the album like green light three me really being in the guns that's like not a facade this isn't a fucking uh a, a character or or like a image i'm trying to portray you see that a lot you see a lot of people they post other people's guns stupid shit you see a lot of people doing photo shoots with other people's guns and houses and cars and chains it's never been me bro like i'm never gonna fake my shit at all like, if anything, I'm really going to bring you into the world that I have to offer uh, for you as the listener. And, you know, when I say shit like, uh, uh, fuck around and find out, 223 Cali Metal Jacket hollowed out, you let us follow clout, that's real shit. Even though it's kind of like teeter-tottering on, you know, nonsense, it's still like realness within the music. You know, we really do, or we really are out here at the range shooting you know i'm not in the streets but it's just like 
I'm really going to represent everything that's going on in my life to the best of my ability. Now, you can't talk about everything. I live in a room. It's painted blue with the fucking few. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that shit is corny. Like, that shit really is some weirdo. Like, that's like nobody want to hear all of that. Like, I, under, I understand as a as a as a rapper, as an artist, people actually want to be entertained and some of that shit ain't entertaining right and i don't even know i have a whole bunch of notes of what i'm gonna talk about but i don't even give a fuck so basically i kind of consider this my first album even though my first album had already came out my debut album voodoo love it's like fucking night and day with voodoo love and green light three voodoo love was like me still being depressed and me still, you know, with this woe is me music. And it's cool. And a lot and not the whole the whole album ain't like that, but it's just a lot of it to me is dated because it's not that's not where I'm at in my life. A lot of that is like me still hurting about my cousin and my homies. And and believe me, I'm still, you know. It's still not easy for me to to deal with all of all of that shit on a day to day, but it's a lot as a man and just growing up and living life and shit. It's like I'm fucking past that shit already. Not past it, but it's like you just learn how to deal with it better versus at that time shit like when I was making Voodoo Love, everything was going on like you know uh, making like the first half half of the album that's when I was still living with my grandma and then during the process of of the album I came home and then me just gaining a whole bunch of weight to me uh, uh almost getting kicked out again to losing a whole bunch of weight again and it was uh it was the process was like very uh like rough on me you know what i mean in the creative process it was kind of the same thing with green light three where i got a chunk of it done in a short period of time and then i just took a whole bunch of uh voodoo love was a lo- even longer process voodoo love was probably like um i got a chunk of it done within like six months and then six months it took me like a whole another six months to just kind of uh refine it Like, I think in January, I started mixing and mastering it, and it didn't come out till June. So that was kind of, like, overcooked, you know, to where Voodoo Love was just, like, I was just waiting for the perfect time, and I spent too much time, I feel like, getting it all together versus Greenlight 3. It's, like, well done, or, like, even medium rare to where it's just like i don't want to overcook it i picked the date this is when it's going to be done by i got it pretty much done and i'm like yeah you know i can add samples i can add this and that and the but why the post-production is not very necessary it's like i don't like why give you these little triangles and sparkle effects and all that during the listener experience to just distract you away from my lyrics like i don't want you missing out on what i have to say you know, I have a lot of things to say that I want you to listen to. And I feel like it'll just be bogged down by overproduction. So Voodoo Love and Greenlight 3 was very different. They're very similar in the way that I I brought the listener into my world at the time. But it was like Voodoo Love was like depressing. I can't even li- like uh, uh, Tears of Pain. Like super emo track i don't got one emo track on this song the only like real emotional thinking about life ass track is definitely uh oro but even oro is kind of like there's not really nothing you know crazy sad about that song it's you know really the hook uh from my angels in the sky i'ma find a way all the trouble on my mind gotta go away you know it's like real shit. It's, to me, it's real shit. It's not nothing to be, you know, sad about. It's just it is what it is. Yeah. 
So a lot of things were going on in my life. My pops was buying guns. I'm performing the songs at shows. People are digging it. Shout out to everybody who came through. Shout out to Johnny Bars for recording a, a lot of my performances. Shout out to Chicano Syndicate. Shout out to Audio Dope, everybody out there. Noah James. Um, I appreciate it. You know what I mean? And I'm glad y'all could witness the journey. Like we're on, like, I'm glad y'all witnessed the journey that I'm on. Like just coming, like making this album, putting it together for the people. It's, it was very difficult and that I was really busy and I, I had my hands tied a few times, but we got it done. Um, uh, so thank you to everybody. I appreciate everybody. Uh, I can't forget Advis for uh coming out he stays he told me he stays in hawthorne and he came through to to film uh my set at audio dope if, if i was him i would have been like find someone else the fuck i ain't gonna fucking travel all that bro la traffic will literally have you suicida bruh like suicido for sure like you're really gonna be like fuck everyone like in this motherfucker so shout out to Advis, bro. Uh, shout out to to um, my girl Jessica Rabbit out there. She's not my girl, but the home girl uh, Ray, especially Ray. She did the uh, photography. I'm gonna put the picture up. Boop of the album cover. Wonderful. We had um just a crazy. Me and Ray have this really dope chemistry. That's just like it's really easy. You know what I mean? Like Ray is a uh, a really great artist to work with you know she has like pretty much all the photo shoots we ever did is just me uh especially with this photo shoot so let me just talk about this one specifically for green light three the 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 photo the the photo cover i used for green light three wasn't going to be for green light three it was going to be for another album but i love the picture so much i was like you know what i could just stretch this and make two out of it so I, I don't even think Ray even knew I was going to do this. I think I just uh, told her if I could bring my guns with me. And she was like, yeah, sure, no problem or something like that. And I brought them and I showed her, you know, these aren't loaded. You know what I mean? I would never bring a loaded uh, firearm around uh, any of my friends. So we just we did the photo shoot and it was like magic. It was like the only the, the two photo shoots me and Ray did where it was like magic was the one we did for Valentine's Day where I'm in the suit with the flowers. And then the other one was for the Green Light 3 photo shoot. And those were like taking pictures. I already knew like I felt it, just the vibes and everything like that. The photos, it was just fire. Like, you know, it was it was uh, like, you know, when you made a great song, like, for sure, people are going to rock with this for sure. And that's how I feel like the whole Green Light 3, the whole album is. It's like a whole album full of bangers. Like, not one, there's not one song where I'm like, eh. Like, no, bro. Every song is a banger. And that's all I ever want to do with my art. Like, I just want to make bangers. I want to make dope content with like minded individuals. So, shout out to Ray. Really, really dope photographer. I encourage everybody to get her photos done by her. Uh, I still need Ray. I still need you to take pictures of all of like my whole familia. You know what I mean? Uh, we definitely got to set that up. Anything else about Green Light Three? Green Light. If you know where that sample is, you know you know where that sample came from, bro. Um, performing it at shows, I got really good reception. That's what fueled it. Like, if the songs weren't really doing good at the shows, it might have actually changed the trajectory of this album. But since people were rocking with it, I was like, oh shit! If they like unorthodox clocks, they're gonna like copper jackets. They like copper jackets. Okay, well, this is definitely a green light. And shout out to Jetta OG. He's on a uh, Black Magic Ratchet, the first feature I've ever gotten from an artist. In like years, like I don't know how many years it's been since I've done since I've gotten a feature, but it's been a long time and he killed it. So shout out to Jetta OG. Um, and it really breaks up the 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 monotony, if there is monotony in the album to where it's like, OK, well, is there going to be like a feature? Yes, there is. It's one feature. So. You get a little bit of everything, you get underground, you get more poppy, you get R&B ish, you get you know, gun rap to real shit. 
and I fully endorse this, man. Um, the message of the day is respect the journey, man. Really, like, it, it's not about the finish line. It's about the journey. So there, there, you got to appreciate the whole process. Appreciate the process of the bumps in the road to the the victories and the, the, the perceived victories and perceived defeats, whatever they are, like... Everything that came with this album, I fully take like 100% of it. Message of the day is just like appreciate everything that goes on in your artistry, good or bad. Because trust me, if everything was cookies and cream, it, it just it wouldn't mean as much. It'd be like, oh, OK, well, yeah, like, you know, the artists who are just like, oh, yeah, well, Everything went good with this album. I had this, this, and this. We went to Dubai and did like that. Like, no, bro. A lot of this album I made while I was still dealing with a lot of things in my life. And a lot of it I wrote at work and, and just, you know, it, was a, it wasn't a difficult process, but it was a, a, a process nonetheless that I fully, fully appreciate. So appreciate the process. This and and don't forget Greenlight 3 is out. So go get that. Right after this shit ends, you go and listen to that. Spotify, whatever. I'm gonna have all the links down below. Uh, you know, comment what's your favorite song, what you liked about the album. You know, I want I want the feedback. I really do, because this is something I want everybody to listen to and give me feedback. Like if you don't like it, what didn't you like? If there's beats that you did like, what'd you like about them? You know, anything from the lyrics, the message, the inter instrumentation. I want all of it. So let me know. This is the God's Hour. First match was the turn out of my lifestyle. Smoking green, blowing white clouds to build the blue skies Conversating with the gods by my wildflower To let them know that it's the gods I would This love's the never ending saga Gods by my wildflower To let them know that it's the gods I would This love's the never ending saga Gods by my wildflower To let them know that it's the gods I would This love's the never ending saga Gods by my wildflower To let them know that it's the gods I would This love's the never ending saga Walk through the sands of times like Gara On the other side Side of that gat is karma, he wet Prada, the devil like inside your box now, while the angels fly over my headstone.